to make comment. A Swiss millionaire goes on trial in Sri Lanka. His accusers say he's abused 1,500 children on the island. In Sri Lanka, rich means powerful. So that with the money, you can buy anything, and the child is the least. What can we in Europe do to stop the men who ruthlessly exploit these children? Lanka <laughs> And why are so many Western paedophiles in Sri Lanka still at large? The boys like, like these foreigners. Because they get little money, they get uh, some presents like that. Eh? Sri Lanka lies like a teardrop off the tip of southern India, attracting thousands of tourists a year with the promise of palm-swept beaches and friendly and obliging people, perhaps too obliging. In recent years, the island has acquired the reputation as a safe haven for child sex abusers, the majority from Europe. A UN investigation says that one in five tourists arriving on the island come to have sex with underage children. The main attraction is boys, beach boys. Estimates of the number of children being abused varies. International agencies say 3,000, Locals tell you it's nearer 15,000. But the predators and their prey can be seen on virtually every beach. They know there are these boys on the beach. They know it's going to be easy because they've been told by other people who come back. I think secondly, uh, I know they uh, they feel it's cheap. It's readily available. They can afford it. They are there anyway. I think thirdly, uh, there is definitely a racial thing involved in that um, white males seem to um, get a great deal of satisfaction out of having sex with a non-white. And I think there must be many males who look for a very young person uh, and a child uh, as a sex partner, thinking that that very young person would not have AIDS. have girly bars and red light districts like you get in Bangkok here in Sri Lanka, the child prostitution is prevalent but covert. It takes place in the so-called safe houses and private hotels where rooms are rented for three pounds an hour to foreign tourists or in the private villas of wealthy paedophiles who come and live deliberately close to poor fishing villages like this. It's an unholy alliance between the vulnerability of the poor and the self-interest of the privileged. A seaside resort like Nagombo is rich with opportunity. The villas owned by rich foreigners are found alongside cheap hotels, where rooms are obtainable at short notice with boys, and no questions are asked. It is very much a pedophile problem, and they are so well established, they are so well entrenched with local support. They would never be able to do what they are doing without local support. And they've been doing this for the last 15 years. They've been here, they've set up small businesses, they have their own homes. They themselves market the destination for pedophiles. It is extremely well organized. From the time of arrival at the airport, either one of the people who are here, a foreigner who is here or a local person, would meet the arrival, take them directly in a vehicle to the house of abuse, the houses of horror. And that was not my expression, that was what a foreigner told me, that those are houses of horror. And then the children are there, provided. The children are so small, six and seven, up to 12. The most in demand age is from about eight to 12. And they are there endlessly. They think that that is their life. The sex tourist can't behave as blatantly today as he did in the past 
Begatels are no longer considered safe for illicit assignations after a recent commitment by the travel trade to tackle child sex tourism. The small print in the brochures reminds the arriving holidaymaker that homosexuality is outlawed in Sri Lanka and warns of approaches by beach boys. But anywhere outside the hotels is fertile hunting ground, as demonstrated by a German journalist who posed as a paedophile for us. If you come as a single male, you walk on the beach on the first day, immediately you are being approached by all sorts of, of, of touts and, and, and pimps which offer you uh, guided tours through the surroundings and if you're not interested they offer you sexual services you know it might be a girl it might be a boy whatever you want so when I went there on the on the on the very first day um, a tout approached me and so uh, after about one or two minutes we we were at the point where he said do you want a girl I said well must it be a girl I said, oh you're a boy man he said yes what do you want uh, 14 15 I said don't like old ones and he said oh well 12 no problem I could have had um, uh, every day another boy that's what he offered me using a secret camera he offered the pimp money to find out where the transaction would end sorry I had to go to the hotel so I have to take some money I only had some more money I'll give you a thousand for a start yeah okay okay there will be more huh yeah so can you can you bring one here? I will change every day for you one more. So you have many boys, huh? Yes, okay. I have in the village some old poor people. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, nice boy, young one. Very nice, yeah. very young. Not this. What? Not yes. this one. No hair. No in the face. No moustache. Yeah. Now we start to come in little, little. It's good size. Huh? Nice, nice, nice. Fourteen, fifteen. Mm. 12, maybe 12. Yeah. 12. I asked him, isn't that quite dangerous? I mean, it's forbidden, we know that, and there are processes uh, or um, pr pedophiles are being prosecuted in that country. And he said, yes, um, well, first there are safe houses, mostly being run by foreigners, where you can go and where you can spend your time with those boys or girls, whatever you prefer. And um, he added immediately, look, don't look around, but the two guys playing cricket in the background it's local tourist police. They are uh, not dressed as policemen, but they observe the beach. So I said, what do you do about that? He said, well, I bribe them. You know, I give them 10,000, 20,000, and then it's possible. 50. 50. All together, room, boy, everything. One five. Yeah. No, no. Five not. Five not. Everything. Everything together. I thought hotel, one five. Yeah. Oh. Hotel. A uh, room, air conditioned room, or if you like some Fanta Cola, everything. The safe house he took me to was about 300 meters from the beach. It was uh, a little bit remote from, from the main road and it was a small bungalow in an uh, enclosed compound being owned by um, a German. If you rent the room, it's a package arrangement, so to speak. You do not get only the room, you get a boy as well. I had the possibility to, to spend an hour with that boy, doing whatever I wanted to do. And, uh, well, I went out. Nothing happened. The role of the police is ambiguous. While stories of collusion and bribery among local police are rife, those in charge are keen to demonstrate their covert operations. The young men hanging around on the edge of beach activity are plainclothes police. But there are more than 200 miles of tourist beaches in Sri Lanka, and this can be little more than a token gesture. The pimps and paedophiles using this stretch are devious and resourceful in their tactics, and they keep well out of sight. <laughs> I 
ada ada dawas itu lalu tu nama metan eva sidya sidya la naik ella kian dua puluh orang mukadar ni ni dia naik bah nanti bah nanti bah kian dua puluh orang sidya la naik ella ada dawas itu lalu tu nama But on the neighbouring bay, the pimps are openly prowling for business. Seren, who is an old hand at the game, finds mid-morning and late afternoon the most profitable times to work. A former prostitute himself, his main motive today is to earn enough money to feed the drug habit that was forced on him by a former abuser. Drugs are often used to make the boys more compliant. <laughs> Two of the boys Seren controls ask him if he has any work for them, but it's a quiet day. An approach to this German, a regular on this patch, gets nowhere. He's not prepared to pay more than 300 rupees, about four pounds, for a sexual encounter. It's all quite open, with little fear of police surveillance or interference. The allegation cannot be ruled out completely, but offering bribe and getting away with it uh, is one of the modus operandi of any lawbreaker. And uh, there are other policemen, we should say the black sheep, who might accept bribes in this case, but we have, that has not been a big problem for us. Of course, a certain pedophile who was arrested uh, was found to be a very affluent man living in luxurious villa with several vehicles and all of the comforts like swimming pool and air-conditioned rooms and internet and fax and the various things. A man like that would uh, pay any price to ensure his liberty. There seems little doubt that the Swiss businessman and prolific paedophile Victor Baumann bought people's silence for 10 years before his arrest last October. He runs four factories and is a friend of government ministers and high-ranking police officers. Once arrested, his team of expensive defense lawyers made sure that he didn't remain behind bars for long. Outside the court, the parents of the abused stood alongside supporters from among Bauman's employees. Although divided, all were astonished that a man who had appeared invincible should have been apprehended at all. The case of Victor Bauman, I think, was known to everybody in Nigambo for at least the last five or six years. Uh, the, the lobbying groups there, the activist groups there, the religious groups, of all denominations were aware of the activities of Victor Bauman. But nobody wanted to act because he was a, had so much of powerful support. And at the same time, he was contributing to the economy. Bauman's arrest at his home in Nagombo followed a long campaign by the local child rights organization, Peace. His fortress, like Palace, was finally invaded by police and the man who had entertained the island's elite in these rooms and who had behaved like a feudal landlord in the community was exposed as a serial child abuser. Pornographic material was removed from his home and he faces charges of child abuse on the testimony of six of his victims. He bought his impunity for so long with his philanthropy. He poured money into local schools, medical facilities and even the church at the many parties held by him for friends at his house, the young guests were encouraged to call him uncle. I was able to get a lot of money. I was able to get a lot of money. I was able to get a lot of money. I was able to get a lot of money. I was able to get a lot of money. He paid for teachers, new classrooms, windows, desks and chairs, and he took his reward from the pupils. 
Today, posters warn the children against befriending foreigners, but only after the headmaster discovered that 32 of his boys had fallen into Bauman's trap. Mr. Bauman said that he was going to be blah blah kollo kiyala natara karala meka nikan ek ek lamaya joke ekata me me kiyana kathawak hatiyata eya mata pahadili karanna utsaha gerawa namuth man eka ehema ekak nemeya pahadili lesa me wage tattwanna karunu thiyenawa kiyala kiyapohama eya e kiyapu lamayinma paasalen iwath karagena menin paasal walta yawana tattwayata kataytu kala man मगे दाहवनी पंडित ने आरुद्धे मंगिया मिस्टर बाबूमान ना गये थे मिस्टर बाबूमान हम हमें किन्हें टा प्रेसेंट आ दिना उपांडित ने तो मंगे प्रेसेंट लावा गान या कोई आगे या पिटपास तीन हाँ सी बुटो हाँ सी बुटो का रेन नहीं गये तो मैं हाँ सी बुटो का रिक्त है इतने लोगों ने मेरे टाने कहाँ ये टीवी कहाँ है Timang dia, dia yang pasti, ya I think, karena kita ini mungkin ada tiga hari kita nak naik, ya ini ada para kahala, ni kahala kan? Ma kahala yang orang piye benda, sudu kene kena orang dia, dua set balat kah ni orang ni la, atau le, apa la, kita tiga balan ni kena, thora, kolet te panu dia kira, ada kah ni ma, dua set Langkah tanah galah Indo la, sipe galah la, bayi atlet galah mana, atega, atega galah, eh, ini dalam dini parat, balat balat karya orang gila, ma, piye pen la, orang gila, eh, ini dalam ais, eh, ini dalam mea pena. People around here tell you the man they once called the King of Nagombo, Victor Bauman, abused hundreds of children. Some parents colluded, grateful for the extra money their sons are bringing into the family. Others protested, but the local police weren't prepared to help. Ironically, when help came, it was from Victor Bauman's country of origin. Little was known in Switzerland about the flamboyant businessman who left over 10 years ago to cut such a prominent figure in Nagombo, until, that is, his activities came to light here. Child abuse is now seen as a global problem. The behavior of Europeans abroad is being recognized as our moral responsibility. When peace appealed to Switzerland, help came from a small children's charity based in Lausanne, it was their initiative, albeit from 5,000 miles away, that exposed Bauman. L'organisation Peace est trop petite pour s'attaquer à un homme aussi puissant que Victor Bauman, qui est très riche et qui peut acheter les gens, acheter leur silence. Une stratégie que nous avons développée, à savoir d'envoyer des enquêteurs sur place déguisés en, en touristes en l'occurrence, qui ont ramené des éléments de preuve de la culpabilité de M. Bowman. Ces éléments de preuve ont été transmis par le CID au gouvernement suisse et c'est le gouvernement suisse qui, à son tour, a demandé au gouvernement sri-lankais d'arrêter M. Bowman et de mener des investigations. Alors, on change d'étage, vous comprenez Quand un gouvernement attaque euh, un Suisse, le gouvernement suisse attaque un Suisse au Sri Lanka, le gouvernement Sri Lanka ne pouvait plus euh, faire semblant de ne pas comprendre. Il était obligé, obligé euh, d'obtempérer. The committee's investigators revealed the horrifying scale of the abuse. They discovered that some 1,500 boys had been used by Victor Bauman for his own gratification and for that of his like-minded friends. D'abord, ce n'est pas l'arrestation de Bowman qui nous satisfait, car il est établi que Bowman avait des complices. Il y avait des Européens qui venaient et des enfants étaient loués à ces Européens qui venaient sur place. L'affaire n'est pas finie. To uncover just how wide the Bauman pedophile network reaches, Swiss police raided his house on the border with Germany and seized material. There are suspicions that Bauman is marketing child pornography throughout Europe. 
Like other European countries, Switzerland has the laws to punish its nationals who abuse children abroad, although as yet none have been. But as the state prosecutor investigating Bauman discovered, this would depend on him being deported, and that could be difficult. Das ist ein großes Problem in diesem Fall. Es gibt einen Auslieferungsvertrag zwischen der Schweiz und Sri Lanka, aber der datiert aus dem letzten Jahrhundert. Und es ist so, dass in diesem Auslieferungsvertrag die Sexualdelikte nicht mit inbegriffen sind. Und weil es hier um die Verfolgung von Sexualdelikten geht, entfällt eine Auslieferung. Das heißt, dass wir auch nicht die Möglichkeit haben, einen internationalen Haftbefehl zu erlassen, weil dies nur dann einen Sinn ergibt, sofern man nachher eine Auslieferung verlangen kann, was hier aber, wie gesagt, nicht der Fall ist. Und diese Möglichkeit besteht nicht. Though there are increasing demands in Europe to stop the tradition of sex offenders traveling huge distances to exploit children in poorer countries, what's needed is practical help. A fitting gesture, for example, would be to introduce tougher detection laws to prevent known paedophiles traveling at all. Experts should be sent to countries like Sri Lanka to help police there combat wealthy men like Bauman. Because back in Sri Lanka, there's fear that even Victor Bauman could escape justice. At this rehabilitation center in Nagombo, most of the boys are victims of abuse. Here they get therapy for the damage caused by their association with men like Bauman. Like some priestly Pied Piper, except that he cherishes the boys he gathers up, Father Pinto has waged an often lonely war against Bauman. Others have been scared off by fear of reprisals, and recently he too has received death threats. He's being protected by this government, and especially the politicians in this area. He has uh, given money for election campaign. He is buying a lot of people. So because of that, uh, I don't think that justice will be done for these children who are abused. If this type of person is not brought under the law and justice is being not being done, then there is easy for other pedophiles to come to Sri Lanka and spoil uh, our other, uh, children. Father Pinto's Technical Center is one of the few organizations trying to do something for victims of abuse. 350 boys, including some he rescued from Bauman, get training, but they still live in fear of the past. It was time to speak to Mr. Barman himself, who's out on bail and apparently at home. Can I see Mr. Barman, please? Oh, Mr. get out! Why? What's the problem? I have his card here. I yeah, where the card? I want you to call on him. Get, get, no, get the card here. This is Victor Barman. Can I have on him? Don't take it from me. Why do you want to take it from me? This get, is Mr. Barman's card. You can read it. You can read it. Money, money, money. Get. So why won't you let me have it? Why won't you let me come in? Yeah, I know it's nice. I have a card. Not you. Money. I don't worry. It's not take money. Hey, what is this? Hey, is this how Mr. Barman treats his visitors? Oh. It would appear that the Bauman camp is on the defensive, but will it last? I'm pessimistic about these things. I'm really pessimistic about these things because these people are so well covered. There are other people also, just like uh, Bauman, who are here, but they are engaged in business, they have good partners, they are associated with well-known organizations, and it is very difficult to touch them. It's extremely difficult. That is a very sad situation in my country. Campaigners like Aaron Tampo say it's not just that these men have money to throw around, but even when they're caught, the system doesn't do them justice. 
He's helped rewrite the laws relating to child abuse in Sri Lanka, where offenders can now face up to 20 years in jail. The police are stepping up their prosecutions. There are currently three other cases involving foreigners going through the courts, and Tampo is handling one of them. But his efforts are constantly frustrated by weaknesses in the judicial system. Have there been any positive results in court? Well, more cases have been filed, uh, and they are now underway. But whether the outcome will be what is desired is another matter. Can you give me an example? Well, there's one particular case in which I'm assisting the prosecution. And I'm afraid that uh, this has been going on somewhat like Tennyson's Brook. For the last uh, 18 times it has come to trial and been postponed for various reasons. But uh, in the course of this long drawn out process, children have been brought in, put through unsatisfactory procedures, uh, exposure, unnecessary publicity, trauma of uh, very aggressive and sometimes uh, unpleasant questions, and uh, deprivation of schooling, families being put to social stigma, and other undesirable features. I don't think the state has put in enough resources into awareness raising as they should. And we are just using a lot of buzzwords like, you know, empowering women, empowering children, and cliches, etc., which may be going down very nicely in international forums. But the fact of the matter is, when it comes to the reality, the courts, the judicial system itself, the criminal procedure code, the evidence ordinance, the police force, the social services department, the health services, the customs and immigration, all these people have to be sensitized, they have to be given more specialist training, and more human resources have to be committed in, across the board. Another problem is the length of time the cases take. The Swiss man in Aaron Tampo's case has been out on bail for over a year, in which time he teamed up with another foreign paedophile and assaulted witnesses. They don't appear to be law-abiding citizens. Moreover, they seem to be people who are prone to take the law into their ha own hands in uh, such situations. So uh, it's high time that we enacted some law that such people arrested be kept in custody pend uh, until the completion of the trial. little doubt that for the paedophile, and especially those they call boy men, Sri Lanka is a seductive place. Boys are everywhere. The family tradition is to keep the girls at home. At least the boys don't get pregnant, their mothers say. Gunter Platstash is on trial for abusing small boys and has been out on bail for over two years. The 67-year-old German first visited the small fishing village of Abalagorda, he says, because of his arthritis and to paint. He kept coming, he claims, because he grew to love the people of Sri Lanka. The island, yeah, is like a paradise. The forest, the houses, the sea, the beach. I had been coming 12 years to Sri Lanka and had been uh, in different places. The last five years I had been in, in Ambalagoda. Yeah, very nice. Nguyen was just nine when he had the misfortune to meet Platstash. <laughs> I 
ඒ පාර එයා හාදුවත් වගේ ඉතින් මේ හාදුවර එන ඒ පාර ඒක වටේ දාවත්තා වාසේ අද රුපියා 23 the boys like like this foreigners because they get little money they get uh, some presents like that they Stash wasn't only abusing boys himself. In this German sex contact magazine, he offered to organize holidays for fellow pedophiles. This man replied to the advert, though he only agreed to talk to us in disguise. He received letters from Platzdash, but later fell out with him. Man kann ich mich erinnern, hatte er Kontaktadressen von Pension angeboten mit Preisen von diesen Pensionen, dann hat er so mehr oder weniger von den Orten, wo die Pensionen liegen, geschrieben. Und dann hat er auch erwähnt, dass man Jungs mitnehmen kann und er Kontakte zu Jungs hätte, die im Alter von 14 bis 18 Jahre wären. Hello, Sri Lanka Fan. I have never met such nice, friendly, but particularly willing boys in any other country. Very often, even at night, there is no problem to take a boy with you. All accommodation has been tested by myself. Two double rooms for two friends with boys and balcony. One big lounge near the river. Swimming and boat trips, altogether 14 Deutschmarks with breakfast. Two double rooms with boys, balcony, on the beach, about seven Deutschmarks with breakfast. Einmal war ich erfreut über die Information, er hatte da verschiedene Hotels und Pensionen aufgeführt. Dann hatte er ganz kurz geschrieben, was er für Dienste anbietet. With this you get four lovely photos of your potential friends. Please give the age groups you want, from 13 to 18 years. Altogether, 20 Deutschmarks. If you pay a bit more, you can be picked up by a young friend from the airport. Please give the age group. It's 30 Pfennig per person per kilometer. You should just tell me when and where you want to stay. Then I will have some friends for you. If you like the people of Sri Lanka so much yeah. and, and you are concerned about them, why did you want someone, anyone, an old man like Mr. Wolfgang in his 50s, who wants to spend time oh, with boys to have sex with them? Many people coming to Sri Lanka to, uh, to have a nice time. No, but, but for, Mr. Plastash, you promise him rooms with boys, breakfast, seven Deutschmarks. You, we know quite well what you are I inviting don't him to do. Seven De Deutsche Mark, what is this? Mm. In your letters to Mr. Wolfgang, yeah. you, you promise him boys. You say it is possible no. to find boys. You mention private houses where you can take these boys. You mention the prices, how much the boys cost. Is oh, this no. somebody who no, loves not, the people like of Sri Lanka? This. Not, not full. You, you have now you have imagined some more details what is wrong. Mr. Plastash, yeah. we have the letters here. The mm. letters that you wrote to Mr. Wolfgang with all the details of yeah. how much it costs to hire a boy with a room a for sex in Sri Lanka. No. Oh, you have my letter. letter. You say mm. they are your letters. It's my letter, yeah, yeah. Why did you write such letters? Moment, I have yesterday I don't know if I have it. I mich nicht zählen zu müssen. Aber also versucht als Wissenswerte über das Land, die Menschen und vor allem You see what you say, nice willing boys. Very often even at night there is no problem to take a boy with you. I know private addresses of people who are friendly to us where you can take boys. I'm quoting from your letters, Mr. Platzdash. You offer him two double rooms with boys, balcony on the beach for seven Deutschmarks with breakfast. Now, yeah, I have to give him, he wants the information, and I want also to give him how much the, the room is for when he rents a room in the beach, on the beach. Mr. Platzdash, to an outsider, it looks as if you are organizing 
paedophile rings here oh, in I Sri Lanka. I'm not organizing, no. I give only one, this one message I give to him. These messages are, are there are three not letters, no fewer than three letters to Mr. Wolfgang, all of them offering him everything that a paedophile might want in Sri Lanka. I don't know what, what you want now. <laughs> you are the author of these letters. Apartment bis Frühstück? No, yeah. Young boys have testified against you in court, Mr. Platzdash. They talked One. about how you had sex with them. These letters would suggest you are interested in sex with young boys. I'm interesting. No one has seen me here in the house for take sex with these boys. And yet... There is no, no evidence. You told me you love the people of Sri Lanka. Do you show your love by inviting German men in their 50s and 60s oh to come yeah, to this oh island yeah. and have sex you with can't, children? You can't ask like this. Oh well, yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a relevant question. Very bad. Why do you invite such people like Wolfgang to the island? I not invite. He wants information. I give him this information. What he is doing with it, I, I don't know. Very tempting information. You yourself offer to pick him up from the airport with a man who can bring a boy with him. It's very tempting stuff. For a German pedophile. Yeah. You were prepared to offer that I think, man. I think when, he when, when you are uh, a company with, with my enemy, then I stop this this uh, this uh, interview. I can't. I can't. Gunther Platzdash worked as an engineer on the German railways. He still has a flat in the suburb of Stuttgart, Bad Cannstatt, close to where he worked. His obvious predilection for Sri Lankan boys didn't pass unnoticed by his neighbors, though perhaps because his victims weren't German children and because he caused no trouble, no one complained. Herr Koch, guten Abend. Ist geht um Herr Patzdash. Danke. Hm? Irgendwie. Und dann habe ich halt immer im Sommer gesehen, wo er da war, immer mit einem schwarzen Kurzbeigel. Ne? Also einen mitgebracht, einen Jugendlichen. Ein jugendlicher Typ. Immer. Und die sind schwer, ich war selber zweimal in Sri Lanka, ne? Und die sind schwer zu einem, also zwischen 14 und 16, das weiß ich nicht. Das weiß ich nicht, ne? Ich kann es einfach nicht sagen. Ja, ist klar, also mein, es wird so gesagt, ne? Aber der hat jedes Jahr, hat er einen, und jedes Mal hat er einen anderen dabei gehabt. Das ist sicher. Theoretically, Platzdash could face prosecution back in Stuttgart. Since 1993, it's been possible to prosecute Germans at home who've abused children abroad. So far, I discovered that there have been only two successful prosecutions, although more Germans are accused of this crime than any other Europeans. But despite extradition treaties and talk of new laws being brought in all over Europe, Britain included, Investigators on the ground admit the issue is hardly a priority. The prosecutor investigating Platzdash is making painfully slow progress. Rechtlich ist es ohne weiteres möglich, dass wir einen Straftäter, der im Ausland solche Straftaten begangen hat, hier zur Verantwortung ziehen und auch zur Bestrafung bringen. Tatsächlich sind wir eben in den Schwierigkeiten, dass wir äh, die Beweise, die wir führen müssen, dass es für uns schwierig ist, äh, diese äh, Beweisgrundlagen zu erheben, weil die Taten im Ausland sich ereignen, diejenigen, die etwas dazu zu sagen haben, im Ausland sind. How much motivation is there to pursue the German pedophile who operates abroad? Ja, nun, wenn ich sagen würde, wir tun genug, das wäre sicherlich äh, 
problematisch, denn Sie haben, Sie haben es ja vorhin gesagt, wir tun sehr viel nicht, allerdings wir können auch nicht mehr tun. Das ist die andere Frage. Wenn wir mehr tun könnten, würden wir sicherlich gerne mehr tun, denn wir wissen, dass sehr viele Deutsche äh, nach Asien reisen. Dieser so ganze Sextourismus, da findet ja nun viel äh, statt und es wäre aus unserer Sicht ein dringendes Anliegen, da nun nachhaltig einen Riegel vorzuschieben und äh, wir sehen auch, dass das, was wir bis jetzt tun, eigentlich nicht geeignet ist, da nun äh, die, diese Erscheinungsformen, die ja nun wirklich widerwärtig sind und die wirklich schlimme Folgen auch dort in den Ländern haben, zu unterbinden, das gelingt uns sicher nicht und wenn wir in der Lage wären, da nachhaltig etwas zu tun, würden wir es gerne tun. As long as we don't actually have people from the German law enforcement in these countries to assist the local law enforcement people, I don't think we will get very far. We need evidence, the more the better. And the more evidence we have, the more court cases we have, and the higher the profile will rise, public awareness, hey, when I go to Sri Lanka, it's difficult to hide because there are people out there watching me and uh, I can get caught more easily. In the past, that was no problem. You could get away with murder. There's not enough people watching out for men like Platz Dash here, leaving court for the 18th time after his case was deferred again. While men like him roam free, putting thousands of children at risk, Europe deliberates. There's talk of an international paedophile register to stop these men flitting from Europe to Asia, but it's not certain it'll happen or whether there's even the will to take this problem seriously. We keep telling them, you know, don't send us all your uh, unwanted uh, debris. Uh, but at the same time, the Western countries' uh, sense of perception of our problem seems to be that we are exaggerating the cause, uh, the problem and that it is not really their responsibility to uh, prevent uh, people going out because they say, how are we to know that uh, this man is going out with the intention of molesting children in the third world? Je crois que maintenant, euh, on ne peut plus lutter contre la pédophilie sur un plan uniquement euh, local. Euh, je pense que si l'on veut lutter d'une façon efficace euh, sur le, des organisations mafieuses euh, pédophiliques, eh bien, euh, il y a lieu d'internationaliser le combat. That is where the West should also lead the way, because if people are coming from that part of the world, then it is up to them there in their society to examine their societies and to try to find out why this is happening and why they are coming to our countries.